Hey everybody, my name is Samantha and if you don't watch Top Dog Tips videos very often, I do lots of different videos for um, our site and our YouTube channel from product reviews to how-to videos. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about how to crate train a dog. Now you can see this is our chocolate lab, Sadie, and she was crate trained as a puppy. Um, the door of our kennel is open. She likes to go in there and just lay down. Um, she really enjoys it. Dogs are denning animals by nature. Here, I'll let you do it. Dogs are denning animals by nature. Wild dogs dig dens, and that's where they feel safe in a small area. Sadie, that's not good to do on camera, you silly girl. Um, dogs are denning animals, so they dig dens. They feel safe in a smaller, confined area. Um, oh, there she goes. Dogs enjoy having a space of their own. It's the security of the enclosure and the small um, space that they really enjoy. So um, when you think of a crate, a lot of potential pet parents think of it as a doggy jail or as a cage that they're putting their dogs in, and that's not the case. Crates are a wonderful way to house train your dog when they're too young to behave themselves in the house, when they're chewing and destroying their stuff, um, when they're not house trained yet for the bathroom. And they're also a great thing for traveling. If you travel with your pet, crates are an amazing tool to use. Um, one, in the mode of transportation, if, you're fly, if you have to fly or um, you know, you're taking a bus or something like that with a smaller dog, um, those soft-sided carriers for dogs are essentially the same as a crate. So if you do travel with your dog, um, these can be set up in hotel rooms, they can be set up at your family house, um, wherever you're going, these can be set up easily, traveled with easily, they're very convenient, um, and they're safe. It, it keeps your pets safe, and that's the way that you need to think of it. And when you're house training a dog, it keeps your, your possession safe, it keeps your dog safe from getting injured. Um, so really, you know, crate training is, is highly recommended by a lot of professional dog trainers and experts in the field. It's a wonderful tool to be able to use. So I want to talk to you about it today. Um, again, those primary uses are house training and traveling, so you shouldn't be using this to cage in a dog that's suffering from, here comes the again, uh, that's suffering from separation anxiety. If you leave for the day and your dog um, suffers from separation anxiety and you think that kenneling is going to help, it won't. If your dog wants to get out of the kennel, they are going to damage your kennel and hurt themselves uh, in order to get out of there. And kennels containing the dog can actually make separation anxiety worse because then not only are they feeling that stress of being separated from you, but they are also now nervous and wondering why they're contained in this small area. And if you we talked about dogs being denning animals and being comfortable in there, but if you put a dog with anxiety, nervousness, stress in a confined area, it's not a safe place. It's, it's, it becomes a negative thing. When you put a dog in a kennel, um, when it's a positive thing, like Sadie, now Sadie hasn't been left in her crate with the door locked for more than, it's been almost a year now. She was about six months old when um, we stopped leaving her in her crate during the day. So, um, you know, as you can tell, she's still very comfortable. She loves her crate. And that's what you want is that positive experience of the crate. You want your dog to enjoy being in the crate and not associate it with any kind of negativity or punishment or, um, you know, with a dog with separation anxiety, you're kind of escalating that or adding to that stress and that anxiety by kenneling them. So, you want to make sure that you're doing it as a positive thing to benefit you and to benefit your dog and keep them safe when you're house training, when your dog, um, you know, needs to, if, if you're traveling or whatever, needs to be in an area um, to himself. So never, never, never use it as a punishment. If your dog pees on the floor or chews up something, you don't spank them and then, you know, or discipline them and, and yell at them and then put them in the crate. That is not gonna help you. They are gonna associate the crate with that negativity and they are not going to wanna go in there when it's time to leave them in there when you go to work or things like that. If your dog is younger than six months old, they really should not be crated for more than three hours at a time. Um, they need bathroom breaks. So if you work an eight hour day outside of the home and your dog is crated, you wanna make sure that you have somebody, a family member, friend, neighbor, um, if you have a dog walker, a pet sitter, um, come over about every three hours and let your pet out of their crate. Um, if you are like me and you're lucky enough to work from home, um, this was Molly's crate too, so she's gonna go check it out. 
Um, it still is Molly's crate. I can't see it was. Um, our dogs, you know, they, they enjoy their crate and that's what you want. Um, so, it, but if your puppy's less than six months old with a small breed, uh, sometimes that can be even fewer. They're smaller. They can't hold their uh, urine and their feces as long. So it's something that you want to be concerned about when you are deciding to crate train that you need to have a plan for who's going to let this dog out. Um, if you are gone for long periods of time, that needs to be something that you factor in. If you need to hire somebody to do that, then you need to factor that into your budget. Um, again, you always want to associate the, the crate with positive things. So the first thing you want to do when you get the crate is set it up and just introduce your dog to it. Leave the door open, hang around the house, um, maybe like this is in our living room. So I might sit here and watch a show or something like that and just let the dog explore the crate. Let him smell it. Um, this blanket we use, some people put dog beds in there. You can do that too. We use this blanket and we've used this for every dog we've crate trained because we sleep with it on our bed for a few nights. Um, before we start crate training. So it smells like us. It smells like the other dogs in our home because they sleep in our bed. Um, so it smells like us. It smells like the other dogs. It smells like our cats. It smells like our home. Um, and, and that's a safety thing instead of just having a brand new crate with a brand new dog bed that has those, um, you know, those smells of the store and other people that maybe have touched it and um, those, that chemical odor that sometimes new stuff has. So we use this blanket for that reason and that's kind of a calming aid that we use, um, which you can tell Sadie wads it all up. Our little beagle nests in it. She gets it all in a pile and lays right on top of it. Sadie likes to wad it all up and kind of snuggle with it. Um, so that, that helps and that's something that I would highly recommend if that's something that you're doing is to use a blanket or if you're going to use a dog bed, don't buy a brand new one and stick it right in the crate. Buy one, let your dog lay on it, let your other animals or family members sit on it, lay on it, be with it. Um, so it gets those odors and your dogs more comfortable. And you just want to let them explore that. If there's something in there like a bed or a blanket that they're already used to, they're going to go in there because they smell that familiar smell. They're going to go in and smell the new smells of the kennel. And they are just going to have that time to get used to it without the door being closed. So they're going to go in and out, in and out. And understand that this is just an extension of your home. It's another small room in your home. They can go in and go out whenever they want to. And that's what you want at first. So I would recommend setting the kennel up a few days before you're going to need to use it and giving adequate time. Um, I would say at least 48 hours, if not three or four days or even longer if you can, um, so that your dog has adequate time to get used to the kennel. Do not pick your dog up and put them in the kennel to get them used to it. Just relax. Like I said, put it somewhere in your office or um, in your living room. You can sit, watch a show, get on the computer, do whatever you're going to do, and just give your dog the time to explore it 100% on his own accord. Um, you do not want to try and force it or you're going you're gonna to cause some negative feelings about the crate uh, very quickly. Once your dog is used to the crate and going in and out, you can start feeding him in the crate, feed him his meals in the crate, and leave the door open. Um, if your dog is very skeptical about going into the crate, like I said, you don't want to pick him up and put him in there, but what you can do is just feed him his meals in there, and if he only goes to the door, put his food just inside. So maybe he only has to step his front paws in at first. Once he's eaten a couple of meals that way, the next day maybe put it halfway in the kennel, and so he has to go all the way in, but he's not completely to the back, and work your way up to where you're feeding your dog in the very back corner of the crate so his whole body's in there. He gets used to the fact that he can go in, eat his food, turn completely around, um, and explore the crate a little bit more. So feeding your dog in there really helps. That's a really good way to positively reinforce the kennel that that's a good thing. And once he's used to eating in there, um, you can gradually begin to ease him into closing the door. So once he's used to it and he's going all the way in the kennel, then he can do, um, you can put his food in that back corner and just shut the door. If your dog finishes eating and he starts to whine, at first you only want to shut the door for about a minute at a time. Just show him that it's okay in there. When the door is closed, you can open the door and he can come out again. Um, if he starts to whine, just ignore that behavior. And when he stops whining, you can let him out. Um, or again, start with that one minute and just show him that, you know, it's okay. You're fine in here. I'm going to open the door and you're going to be able to come out. So, um, you know, start with that one minute. Don't worry so much about the whining at first. Work up to, um, you know, do it for a minute and then work up gradually. So maybe close the door for a minute for three or four days. And then on the fifth day, maybe close the door for two minutes. Do that for two or three days. Close the door for three minutes. Do that for two or three days. Close the door for five minutes. Close the door for 10 minutes, two or three days. 
Um, so you can see how you're working through this process very, very gradually. You do not want to scare your dog into thinking that he's trapped in his cage because that's a negative association. So you do it very, very gradually. In the beginning, like for the one minute, you can stay right here. Um, you can't see it, but there's a recliner chair on the other side of our living room. So I might close the door, sit in that recliner chair, and you can talk to your dog. It's, oh, you're okay. It's okay in there. You're fine. Um, and make him wait. And then open the door. As you gradually increase that time, once you're getting up to five minutes, maybe you hang out for the first minute or two, and then you walk into another room. Again, ignore that whining. He might whine when you leave the room, but come back after the three or four minutes. Show him, it's okay, you're fine, I'm back, I'm gonna open the door, and you're, you're all set. And he'll begin to learn that he's okay in there with the door closed. Now you're gonna gradually move up until you can get him to stay in the crate with the door closed for a half an hour without whining. And you wanna make sure that you're not spending the whole hour sitting in the room. Walk around, do your thing, whatever you need to do. If you need to go outside, go outside. Um, and, and let your dog know that it's okay. And when you get up to 30 minutes, then your dog is pretty well set. You can start leaving him in there when you leave, um, say, you know, you guys are going out at night or you're going to work or whatever. Then you can start leaving him in there for longer periods of time. Just remember, if he's a young dog, you want to plan for those bathroom breaks. Um, no dog should be left in. Even an adult dog that's house trained 100% should not, that, or I shouldn't say house trained, but won't go in their kennel at all, um, should not be left any longer than eight hours. That is the absolute maximum. And really should be closer to six um, so I highly highly encourage that if you need to hire somebody like I said make sure that before you think about adopting a dog you're budgeting for that um, or you have a friend or a family member that lives close by a neighbor that's home that can do that you need to make those arrangements to um, keep your dog safe in his crate but also allow him the freedom to use the bathroom outside and, and get a little bit of a break during the middle of the day so you hit that 30 minute mark, you can start leaving them in there for longer periods of time. Um, when you crate your dog when you're leaving, you wanna make it as low key as possible. Crating is absolutely a normal thing. It's not something that he, it's not a trick that you're, you're teaching him that he needs to be proud of or that you are praising for. We go in the crate, that's what we do during the day and you wanna make it as normal as possible. So um, you when you begin the crate training, use a command. Whatever it is, go to bed. Some people say go to your crate, um, go lay down. Whatever the command is, when you open the door to put your dog in there, it's go to your crate. When you first start with the food, put the food in there and say, go to your crate, let's go to your crate, let's go to your crate every single time. And he's gonna get used to that command, meaning go to your crate and it's time to lay down or sit in there or whatever you're going to do in there, I'm going to close the door. So you use the command to enter. And um, don't drag out leaving. When you close the door, I know it's hard because our dogs did it to me too. They make the saddest little face in the world, especially when you have an open kennel like this and you can see them. Our um, front door is right there so I can literally see them. As I'm leaving the door, I see their face drop. I feel terrible, but you cannot drag it out. Don't stick your fingers in the crate and tell them it's okay, I'm gonna be right back, I'll be home for you. Um, you just close the door and leave the house and that's how you need to do it. It can't be something that um, you know, you're making a big deal about because then your dog's going to want to make a big deal about it too. And the same way with keeping, uh, with coming home. If your dog's jumping around, acting crazy in the crate, don't pay any attention to him until you get over here and acknowledge the fact that you're home and that he can come out. But if he's acting foolish, jumping all around, um, you don't want to make a big deal, walk in the door, hey buddy, I'm home, oh, I missed you so much. Do not speak a word to him, come in the house, ignore all the actions until you get to the crate and then you open the door and you can play with him and let him out and eventually he's gonna see that he needs to just be patient. When you come in the door, he waits and, and you come in and open the door so that he can come out. Eventually you will get to the fact where, the point where um, like weekend, you can leave the crate open all the time and your dog will, that's his um, safe place. We don't crate our dogs anymore at all at night or during the day. Um, and this is just their safe place to go. They, they love being in there so we keep the crate up. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's a nice way to give your dog his own personal space that nobody else ever goes in there. That's your dog's little um, 
happy place. So we leave ours up for our dogs um, and, and you can do the same if you'd like to. Um, again, crate training is something that should not be used instead of house training or instead of behavior training. You need to work with your dog, train him not to chew your things, train him to behave inside the house, train him to use the bathroom outside. These are things that you need to do and you can't just settle for oh, I'm gonna crate train him and I don't have to worry about any of that. It's not fair for any dog to live his life in a crate eight or 10 hours a day while you're gone to work. Crate training is not something that you are going to use as a long-term thing. Um, it's something that can be used for the first few months while your dog is training and then it's something that you can um, keep up as a safe place for your dog or something that you can get rid of, but it's not a long-term method. Um, I can't stress that enough. So if you guys have any questions about crate training, feel free to contact me. Um, nighttime training is pretty much the same. Um, you're going to gradually work your dog into it. Some dogs have trouble at night and uh, owners will either buy a, a cover for their crate or throw a blanket over it um, and the dog has a, an easier time sleeping in it. Some owners put it in their bedroom and they have an easier time sleeping with it when they can see uh, their people in the bed there. So, um, you know, but, but nighttime training is pretty much the same thing. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. You can find me on our website, topdogtips.com. My contact information is there. You'll find my website, uh, my email address, which is samantha at topdogtips.com. Feel free to email me anytime. We're on social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Uh, if you would like to contact me in any way through any of those, if you leave a comment on any of our social media pages, that will get back to me. Um, if there's any how-to videos that you want to see, product reviews, if you have any questions about crate training, uh, leave them anywhere on there or send me an email and I'd be happy to get back to you on those. I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video and I will see you back with some more videos later this week. Thanks a lot guys. Have a great day.